Hello, welcome back to Sharks Happen. Today we're going to go over an alleged double great white shark attack. Peter Clarkson was out doing some diving for some abalone and he was taken by two sharks. We're going to go over that attack and that's going to lead us into covering the boat captain, Howard Rod, more than we cover Peter Clarkson. A uh, lot to update on from the last time we covered this one, so I hope you stick around. On February 17, 2011, Peter Clarkson, he was out doing some abalone diving on this. The boat was a six meter, 20 foot uh, aluminum boat and the captain was Howard Rod. Howard Rod was on the deck of the boat and with the air hose going down, Peter Clarkson is in the water and he is diving. Uh, Peter Clarkson is known for using the shark shield. The I guess deterrent that uses electronic or electric field to protect you from a shark. So he may have had this on. He had it on the first time that he ran into a shark. It was in 2002, so 15 years earlier. Uh, he ended up running into a shark when he was on a dive, a four meter great white shark. So 13 foot great white shark ran into him and left him alone and he says that he had a lot more confidence. He was, he was 50 meters below the surface on the rope in a decompression stage uh, stop. So uh, he said that it, he had a lot more confidence to hang on to that rope and just stay there with the shark in the area and finish out his decompression rather than swim to the surface and risk getting the bends. So this is the second time he's ran into great white sharks. Uh, Theory is that he did have the shark shield on if he was down into the water. And there's really not a lot of information on the attack other than Howard Rod witnessed it. And he ended up going ahead and dealing with it in a way that you wouldn't want to do. So we're going to get into that next. But with, with Peter Clarkson, two great whites supposedly grab him. They don't say the depth of water he was in there, about a kilometer, so less, about the you know, just under three quarters of a mile from Perforated Island at the time. And that is where he was taken by the two sharks. Uh, the, the captain ended up with the hose being bitten by a shark. And instead he didn't, he didn't throw out his anchor, which you would want to mark the spot before you go and try to get help. So he didn't throw out his anchor. He didn't hit his EPIRB. Um, he did not throw out a buoy marker, so he didn't try to mark the spot this happened in any way. Now, then he heads into shore, but does he head into shore and call EMS? Does he call anybody to let them know this happened? He calls his lawyer and he calls his accountant. He calls those two people, and it's his lawyer that talks, that does the communicating, it sounds like, with authorities. So this attack ends up happening. Peter Clarkson is gone. They want to go out and search for him, but they don't know the area. The lawyer calls up the authorities and says, no, he's not going to come and help you. So it took him four days. Finally, Peter Clarkson went out four days after the attack to show them where he was, which is odd. There's a lot of odd things going on here. And this thing ended up in an inquest um, where they all end up in an inquest like this. But this one, uh, the judge, <laughs> He was not happy that he had to call this a shark attack. It seems the judge wanted to go ahead and say that there was foul play and he just didn't have enough evidence. Um, there turns out there was a trace evidence of blood on the boat, human blood. So uh, Howard Rod said that he had thrown up on the boat and he had washed it off on his way in. And uh, he didn't mark the spot that was there, didn't try to get any help. And he said that it was because he was uh, so stunned by the by the attack itself. Uh, the judge didn't pull any punches. He let him have it, told him, you know, you didn't do your EPIRB, you didn't, all the things that I mentioned and more, and told him that you know, at best he's incompetent. And you don't get that with, 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 uh, 
with boat captains a lot, somebody being flat out incompetent. But we're going to get into why this guy should never be as incompetent as he is because of the number of things that he's gone through. So we're going to go through that now. Uh, back in, oh, I don't even know that they gave the year, but they mentioned in this article, I'll put the clip up, uh, he was a young boy, you know, maybe a teenager, it doesn't say the age that he was, and he was working on his father's trawler. This trawler went down in heavy seas, I would imagine, and he floated around in a lifeboat for three days before, I believe it was a, a ship had stopped, saw him, picked him up. So three days he was out on a life raft as a, you know, a young man out there after his father's trawler sank. That's number one. That's sea disaster number one that Howard Rod has <laughs> been through. Number two, um, this one sounds like it's before this other case with the fatality. Howard Rod's out and he's diving. I believe it's for abalone again. And he's down in the water. So he dove down in the water and next thing he knows his boat sinks next to him. So he had to rescue his mate out of the boat get him to shore, and then he walked however much distance down the beach to go find help. Sea disaster number two for a guy that's going to end up saying that he was so distraught that he couldn't think of what to do when he's going to have this third one that he could rest on to go back on and say, well, maybe I should do this. He's out in 2000. Uh, 2000. He is out and he is doing some, I believe it's a Goat Island, and him and a mate, they're doing some diving. I believe it's for abalone again. They end up heading back. They get about five kilometers from Goat Island and 14 kilometers from shore. So they're about 10 miles from shore, three miles from Goat Island, and they hit a squall and their boat sinks. Now, the boat didn't sink, but it capsized and flipped upside down. So they both held onto the hull for about three hours. So the two of them are holding on to the hull. Uh, uh, Howard Rod is in his, his wetsuit, but his mate is not going to put on the wetsuit. He's terrified of sharks, and he tells them he doesn't want to look like a seal. He won't put on his flippers, won't put on his wetsuit. He has two, he has his w orange wet suit on, wet clothes they call it, and then he has two uh, life preservers that Rod ended up going swimming down to the bottom of the boat, got the life preservers, got a flare, and swam back up there. And then there was a, a plane going by, and they shot the flare, but the plane didn't see the flare. So they didn't get the attention of that. And then about three hours after that boat went down, and I think it was about one o'clock in the afternoon that the boat went down, but I'm not sure what time this thing went down, but it was daylight when they were out there. Uh, a trawler comes by and it doesn't see them either. They try to get its attention, doesn't see them. Now Howard Rod starts to freak out. He's like, I gotta swim to shore. So what he does is he goes and he tries to swim back to Goat Island, which is five kilometers away now. He's trying to talk his mate into getting into the water and swimming over there too. And his mate will not do so. And so he stays with the boat. And this brings me back to the reef to where that, I don't think that happened in the reef to where they left somebody behind with the boat. I don't remember that. But maybe they mixed two, two stories together and took this Howard Rod story where the guy stayed with the boat. Um, that would be a tough decision, really. I mean, you know the boat's going down and you're gonna be in the water with the sharks anyway, so maybe you might as well swim, but it's just the place I don't wanna have to be. So, he stays with the boat, Howard Rod strikes out. Now, Howard Rod, doesn't even make it to the island. The, the currents had shifted, it's, it's bad weather, and he ends up being pushed 14 kilometers to shore. So he ends up over in Seduna, um, like I said, 14 kilometers from where his boat went down and or from where they were Goat Island. Now he gets to shore and now he has to walk like kilometers through mangroves just to find a road. So he's walking through all kinds of a mess. He said walking and hopping because it sounds like he still had his swim fins on. Howard Rod had his swim fins and he had his wetsuit on when he left the boat. Um, so he finally makes it to the road and 
short time after that, a couple is driving from one town to the other and they see him and he flags them down, gets in the car. And they said that, that he was not worried about himself at all. He kept talking about his mate that was out on the boat. Now they reported Howard Rod's eyes were shut from the swollen shut from being out there. Uh, I believe it was almost 24 hours in the water. He was out there this time and uh, his eyes were swollen shut and, and you know, he was exhausted, but he had, all his attention was on his mate. So the Coast Guard, I believe they couldn't get out that night to search because they were, it was, it was bad weather. So they get, by the time they get out, they do finally locate one life preserver and it's shark shredded. So they assume that the boat went down, that uh, this gentleman drowned, and then the sharks consumed him. And that's the story of number three. So he's had three sea disasters. All three of them, a boat went down that he was on. Um, it's hard to imagine him not being able to think through something that's going to happen on this next boat because he's already been through three of them. Um, I'm not saying that, it, you know, this, this thing was done with him and I don't know why he would want to go ahead and get rid of his mate, an argument, something sudden, you never know. Uh, but with, with his actions after having that kind of a background and dealing with these kind of um, emergencies when he's out on the water, it's hard to fathom that, that, that he couldn't throw out an anchor, couldn't hit the EPIRB. Oh, and that's the other thing with the, with the boat that went down where he was floated through the water. When the boat flipped over, one of the things he got, Howard Rudd got from underneath the boat from in the cabin was the EPIRB, and he turned it on. And that boat, that plane, didn't hear that EPIRB, and it might not have been searching for them anyway. So the EPIRB had made its way to the shore, and it wasn't until the plane was directly over the EPIRB that it could pick up the signal. So the EPIRB was a weaker signal than it was, and that was the excuse that Howard Rod had used for why he didn't use the EPIRB. It didn't work for him the first time, so he didn't use it this time. Um, I don't know, I would think he'd have one on the other boat that went down next to him, but. You know, he got his mate out and got out. By that time, there's no reason to hit an EPIRB. You're already down and out. If you can find the thing, yeah, but you don't want to be down there inside of an overturned boat. Um, and who knows how deep it is and everything like that. So that's an odd background to have. A lot of bad luck there. Uh, your dad's boat goes down. You float around for three days. Uh, the second, second time you're diving and all of a sudden your boat, that's got to freak you out. You know how you see something that you don't think that, that's not supposed to be there? <laughs> and you're, you're diving to go either down there collecting or you're diving down and your boat passes you up. <laughs> that's, just, that's something I would expect to happen to me. And then the, the third one, you know, with the boat just flipping upside down like that, you're just hanging on to it. And uh, finally he makes a swim for it and ends up with that crazy, and now he's 14 more hours floating around, or 12, almost 24 hours floating around to get to land on that situation. So he spent, what, four days floating around in the ocean from these boats going down before the Peter Clarkson attack ever happens. Now, the interesting thing about the whole inquest, and probably the thing that saved Howard Rod in the whole situation, is the fact that they could not get that hose. Remember the air hose that I said that was bitten by the shark when it, when it took them, or sharks either way? But this hose that was bitten, they could not recreate that, that cut until they were able to, to get a shark to bite that hose. So it seems that hose was bitten by a shark. So, I, you know, that probably saved him because everything else he did just makes him look guilty, even if he's not. Um, a crazy attack. Uh, I've always wondered why it was that people thought, you know, that something weird happened. Well, you hear about that incident he had where the gentleman is eaten by the shark that didn't leave the boat just, you know, 17 years before. And... He's had that happen, but then some people don't even know that he went down in his dad's boat and then had a second, uh, uh, another boat go down. So three boats go down and one guy taken by two sharks. I will say that I, I still don't buy this two sharks. I'm not saying that he didn't see the shark attack. And the fact that that thing was cut uh, and they had to get a shark at, to go ahead and bite it, I'm going to go with Howard Rod on this still. Um, 
not as solidly as I did before because all the circumstantial evidence, but that one thing where they had to get a shark to bite it to get that same cut. That tells me that he was taken by a shark, and I think it was one shark, and uh, we're going to go over another attack and these, these single attacks that's going to bring that up where it was one shark and the people that were watching know it was one shark, but they said it seemed like two sharks with how much acti action was going on in the attack. And that happens a lot. They can fold themselves back on themselves so they can dive down and turn their bodies back and come back and bite you before their tail's really out of your sight. They could be coming back at you already, making you think there's two sharks. I think that happens a lot when people witness these attacks, like from a boat, as what happened with Nick Peterson, unfortunately, when he was taken and dragged to the boat. Um, you know, you see the shark and how quick it can turn and get back to what it's doing and you think there's got to be two sharks when actually it's just one. So that's the attack on uh, Peter Clarkson. Uh, we have it down as an attack, fatality, consumption, and uh, one of the crazier attacks and crazier backstories of um, a boat captain that I've heard. That's the show for today. I hope you join me in a few more days, but remember, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.